Welcome to Beyond the Frontline Podcast, where your hosts, U.S. Air Force veterans, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson, will help you transition from the front line to the home front. Listen every other Wednesday as they will bring great conversations, resources, tips, and feel good stories that will resonate and relate. Now, here's your hosts, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Front Line. I am here as your co-host, Donna Hoffmeyer, and here with my partner in crime, the one and only Jay Johnson. Hello, hey Jay. Donna, good How- to be here. Oh, good to have you. We have been off for what? Five six, weeks? Yeah, maybe six. Six weeks. Yeah, we have not seen each other in a long time because I was out and about this summer, at least trying to be, and you were very, very busy with your business. Yeah, you know that old saying, separation makes the heart grow fond? It I, I, does. I miss being in this time and space with you, but give me 10 minutes and I'll agitate you again. <laughs> You'll need to take another six-week vacay. I'm still the queen. Remember yeah, you're that? still the queen. I I'm haven't still forgotten. The queen. So, so how have you been? It, it's been loony for me. So let's talk about you. First. <clears throat> no, it's good. Yeah, really busy on the job front, personal life, traveling a little bit. I think where have I been just in the last? I, I think we talked on an episode. I went out and did some training in Alaska. Came back from that. Went to Vegas. Got to see the Eagles in concert. That was amazing. And bucket list. Yeah, just down to the coast, uh, the Texas coast for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on where you're listening from, some of you would say that's not really the beach. So I didn't call it a beach. It's the warm coast. And, yeah, it is. That's true. Very yeah, no, warm. I mean, that's been my summer. Just really, really on the go with a lot of really, you know, positive business activities, but certainly getting out and enjoying life. Good. Ours has been a roller coaster ride. So we started with, well, my grandmother passed in December, but we had to bury her this June. So my daughter and I went home for that. And my husband and my son were supposed to be prepping for our big six week RV trip with my brother and his family. And we got home, we went and got the RV. And it sounded like a NASCAR race car. Yes, it's crazy. Catalytic converter stolen. And it was on a storage. Yeah, not just yours either. No, ours plus 20 more plus four other storage RV storage places were all crazy. So we thought, okay, just bite the bullet. Let's go get it fixed. And they said, sure, that's four to six months. We won't order it until your RV is on our lot. (laughs) So so needless to say, summer plans got rearranged really fast. You still made your trip though. Y'all just, y'all improvised. Our RV trip turned into a Jeep trip. And so we, (laughs) (laughs) we, Found a sitter for the dogs really quick, and we were going out to my brother's anyway, so we scrapped our RV plans, and we did some road trips, and we actually got to go to Mount Rushmore, and we're in South Dakota, and Colorado is where they live, and and we did all kinds of things around Colorado, and then a week before we were set to come home, we get a call Mm -hmm. from our house sitter, pet sitter, that our oldest dog, Amelia, wasn't doing well. So we all ended up heading home early because the not doing good, she's 16 years old and was seriously declining. So that's, that's a long life for mm, a a pupper. Very long life. Yeah. Yeah, She's had cancer for three years. I mean, the doctor said she's supposed to be a goner a long time ago, Mm. but she held on. So came home, all made it home. And then honestly, a week and a half ago, and we had to, yeah, it's hard. We had to bring her to the vet and help her pass. And so, yeah, so we're, we're hoping that's it because it's been planes, trains, automobiles and everything everywhere. But well, that home. conjures up a memory. Yeah. I literally picture that movie and you know, y'all, y'all been through a lot. <laughs> it felt as chaotic as that. Yeah. So, but we're back and we're, you know, everybody's healthy and happy and we're home. And, you know, honestly, it kind of rolls into what we're talking about. We're the ups and downs of life. And we want to talk about startup and there is lots of up and down startup as I am brand new in it, about a year. And Entrepreneurism, startups. Entre- yes, yeah. I should be clear on yeah, that. It's okay. Entrepreneurism, it's startups. So I'm a year and a half into it and you are the wise one. Oh, well, wisdom is, you know, 
<laughs> that's that that's subject subjective is what I would say seven years seven into my years. journey I guess seven and a half honestly but I'll say seven from when I got serious yeah and how many businesses in general how long do they usually last a new business I, I think what the data that's out there that says most small businesses startups fail within the first five years yeah yeah so you're seven so I, I feel knock like, on anything. Yeah, yeah, my head. I feel like I <laughs> I feel like maybe I've established a little something and I'll be here a while. Yeah. So so I want to talk about it because that is the one thing you and I have talked about. I said, you know, we hear about startup, we hear about entrepreneurial, starting my business. And somebody from the outside, and I know I was one of them, I'm like, what is, what does that look like? Like, yeah. how do you literally start? up yeah how do you start it does you know money fall from the startup tree somewhere <laughs> an angel investor and, maybe right and, yeah so. if you would ever be that lucky you get an angel investor so i wanted to kind of like get a little transparent and talk about not the literally dollar amounts but what was going on when you were starting up yeah. and what it looks like with you know both of us how how it's looking yeah well and i think what's good donna because i know your story as you know mine and are they're very different in, in a me? lot of ways. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, who, we're there for friends. And if mm -hmm. I've learned anything, if we've learned anything, we try to share it with those we care about, probably mm -hmm. with others too. But I mean, we're, we're of course going to share it with. Yeah. And it's just becomes a data point, Donna, right? I mean, you got to decide whether or not what I shared was of value to you or not. And, True. and I wasn't offended one way or the other. It's just information and mm -hmm. it's then what we do with it. And so I guess I say that just to the listeners, because if you're thinking about this whole podcast being better and focused from the front line to, you know, this new place they may find themselves, you and I have talked often that uh, there is so much opportunity, whether you go Tons. work for a for-profit and non-profit, start up your own, go volunteer your time somewhere, take some downtime to just have a chance to find you again. You, you really shared a lot of that in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. This is just an another option and it's one that i think you and i would agree on now that we're in this space now that we're doing this we really couldn't imagine doing anything else you no, agree with that not at all i mean after i mean 21 plus years of having to be at a certain place at a certain time to have to do this to have to be in that meeting and, and someone else filling your plate. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that's a, that is the easiest way to summarize like, Somebody <laughs> else kept filling my plate and I frequently didn't like the food that was on it. Like yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my God, I got to eat this. And yeah. so, <laughs> what is this crap? <laughs> MREs without the Tabasco. So They're not was, used to hearing me talk that way. They're used to you saying. Right, that I'm that usually way. the negative one. I'm oh, no, I don't one. mean negative. I'm going to take you as negative. I said crap, and I'm just thinking oh. you, you sometimes use more colorful, and I'm I, a little more. I I'm a little more. <laughs> I'm a little more tightened down. I don't know how to say that. Locked down. That's that all I'm depends saying. on what conversation. We're well, in. yeah. <laughs> I, well, you and I have those outside of the podcast. I mean, that's different for sure. That's funny. All right. I'm looser in my language. Yeah, we'll yeah. say that. It's all good. So, so <laughs> the, the whole, the whole thing of, you know, always, I mean, I love my military time. I committed to it. I was dedicated to it. I believed in my missions and, and I did them, but when it was done, I did not want to be I didn't want anybody else to be my master anymore. Yeah. I, I felt like I actually built enough skill and to be able to stand on my own and make my own decisions and create what I want to create and how I want it to look. Because you and I both know, and we have both been in jobs where you have this idea and you're like, okay, this is the idea. And you start pushing it forward and people are like, oh yeah. And you're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then it goes through this meat grinder and then gets submerged in God knows what, what? Yeah. and this sludge comes out and they're like, <laughs> look what we did. And I'm like, what, what is, is that? that? <laughs> yeah. And it didn't come out anywhere of what you imagined. So now I get to do it. I get to be, you know, my own boss. One of my friends, my military friends tease me all the time. He's what you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to work this. I'm doing some marketing or I'm lining up the podcast or 
whatever's going on that day. And he's like, oh, a slave to the job. And yeah. I said, I'm the boss. Yeah. I can go get lunch when I want. I can go play with my kids when I want. I can do it at 10 o'clock at night. I can That's do it right. six in the morning. Well, a few things there. Let me, let me step in. One, I just want to remind our listeners, in case you've forgotten, or maybe you're listening to us for the first time, Donna has a very technical sought after skill set. She is a nurse by trade mm -hmm. and, and could be picked up and hired anywhere. And I just want you all to listen to that because I think sometimes we get locked into, well, I've spent all this money or I've spent my whole you know, professional mm -hmm. adulthood life doing this. And it doesn't mean that you can't change. So yeah, I wow. think you value your skills as a nurse and mm -hmm. the being in that environment, but this gave you something brand new. Mm -hmm. It's invigorating. Is that fair to say? Very that, much so. Yeah. And Very much so. so I love that. That's the first thing I wanted to point out that you may choose to do something entirely different and you just need to take the time to explore what that might be. I never had an entrepreneurial bone in my body until one day I did. I mean, I literally. It's so crazy. You I, was never... a, I was a GS 13 and just I think I got tired of kind of what you were describing earlier, someone else filling my plate, occupying my time, dictating what I had to do and when I had to do it. And, and I just did a lot of soul searching to kind of end up where I'm at. That's the second thing. And the other thing you talked about is how much freedom you have mm -hmm. in what you get to do, whether you do it in the morning, do it late at night, the lady in my life has a job that she gets to do remote. She literally can be in my living room, her living room in the truck on mm -hmm. her laptop doing it if she, if she chooses. And there's a lot of freedom in that because mm -hmm. it, you don't have to manage your life so much around that kind of thing, I guess is, is what I wanted to say. So that's why this topic is I think so good for everybody. Oh, absolutely. I mean, so I mean, we kind of went off on a tangent, but the freedom part, I mean, both of us are like, oh yes, we love that freedom. Now I'm going to say there are people and it is completely fine that prefer to go into a place and do a job. Somebody hires them. They don't want to fill their bucket. Yeah. Well, they want someone else to fill it. Yeah. And you know what? That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong Because with guess what? I want to hire some of you guys someday. <laughs> Well, can we be fair since you said we're going to just kind of hit the, hey, let's talk about the great and let's talk yeah. about what the challenges are. I, I don't have stress in my life per se anymore. I do, but it's a different kind. And mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that it's, it's more good than bad. And there are never days where I feel like I can't handle this anymore. So it's a different kind of stress. But if there is any, there are a few occasions when the wells start to run a little low and I'm, I understand I'm the one responsible for finding the next opportunity. So yep. I understand if someone doesn't want to go through that kind of process, yeah, absolutely. why it might be easier to be in a, you know, in a more nine to five traditional yeah. kind of thing. And it's totally fine. Everybody's yeah. got their journey. Everybody's absolutely. Got their journey. Absolutely. But for those of you that are interested in doing it yourself and running the business, I mean, this is for you. This is we want to, we want to bring in people like in our next, it's going to be kind of a series is what we're going to set up for. Yeah. And we'll bring in different people to talk about different aspects of <clears throat> startup and entrepreneurship. Right? We, sure. we know a lot of them. So, so let me ask you this, Jay. Yep. So when you started, you alluded a little bit to this in one of our previous podcasts that you started like you said, I'm done with the GS world. However, <laughs> you were done, but you didn't jump yet. That's true. You started to prep, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, when I do career transition coaching, mm -hmm. I haven't done a lot of it lately. I've done a lot in my past. That's one of the things you and I initially, you mm -hmm. know, connected over even mm -hmm. is I never want somebody to leave a job until they have another one. So even if it's a lifeboat job, just something temporary, even to bridge the gap. Yeah. I, I just think you're more employable when you're already in employment with someone and you're just looking for a new, different, right. better, whatever you want to put descriptor wise on it. So yeah, 100% true. I was still a GS a civil servant and started to have this inkling that, you know, there's got to be something different. And I spent a lot of time self-reflecting and re remembered a time in my life where I had been volunteering coaching, not really even understanding the practice of coaching, but that's what I'd been doing, probably more mentoring, even if you want the truth. Mm -hmm. And I thought I really, really enjoyed that. So I found a way to go get a coaching certification 
and then someone crossed my path, Don. I'm just going to share this yeah. right here. I, six months into it, I'm still a GS employee, but on the side had been trying to stand up my business. I just felt like there was something I was missing. So I went and I found somebody who was an entrepreneur, who was a coach, who had been doing this a lot longer than me. And I asked for a few minutes of her time. And out of that conversation, this is what she said to me that for whatever reason ended up being the kick in the pants I needed or unlock the door I was stuck behind. She said, as long as all you're going to do is hang your hat on someone else's coat rack, you're never going to be a success. Now, I never asked her to fully qualify that. All I can tell all of you listening is what that said to me was I needed to create my own brand. I needed to be authentically mm -hmm. me. And I'm the moral authority of my life. And I already have a story to use to go out there and market. And I came back from that conversation, went through legal Zoom. I know you went a different route. Right, I went right. through legal Zoom. I'm not going to bad mouth. I would just say if I had to do it over again, I'd probably go a different route. Went through legal Zoom, established my LLC, came up with my, you know, my branding, knew what my business name was going to be. And away I went, Don. So where you went. So what did it take to actually start up when you got out? Hmm. What did that look like between the time you said bye-bye GS world yeah. and here we go? Because I know what you're doing now yeah. and I've known you. How long have I known you? Mm, three, four three, years. Four years, guess, right? Yeah, and I have years. watched in the last three years and especially in the last six, eight months, hasn't yeah. it been? Yeah, it takes. It's really starting to like... Yeah. Like every time I see you, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be a secretary. <laughs> oh, I, Jeez. Hate, I hate that. I don't ever want that. But but I mean, you're starting to really start to expand. People yeah. are seeing you. People are interested in you. People want what you have to offer. So from the time you got out mm. to how did you start? What did that look like? That Fair enough. Were you eating ramen noodle? Like what was going on? <laughs> no, I time? didn't have to do that. I mean, so some of you listening, whether you're former service members or not, I mean, I'm a retired Air Force veteran. So I have a pension. I, I'll be honest just because I want to be transparent with all of you, as I know Donna wants to be. You know, I knew I was going to have a roof over my head, the lights on. It's still scary. But listen, as you're talking about that piece of it, there are still, there are still needs. Creating a website presence, hiring people who have expertise in marketing, getting legal advice, drawing contracts up and having somebody with a legal background to review them. So listen to me, everyone. This is no kidding what I did. I started incurring cost. And you may not think, you know, your idea is going to bring cost, but trust me, there's always little hidden and underlying things you haven't thought More of. More than you could think of. Yeah. I, uh, I sold my Harley Davidson motorcycle. It Ooh. was immaculate. I had customized it. It was low mileage. It, it, when I wanted to go ride it, it was freedom waiting on me, you know, whether I rode it a lot or not. I sold that to fund my business. And I think everybody, it's, it's, uh, it's really an important thing because I knew that I was going to let go of something important to me, but that there would be a time later once the business took off that I could get it. And I have a new one in the game. I was just going right? to say, you were with me when I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I was there when you bought the new one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's called the law of sacrifice, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to let go of things of lesser value in this moment so that I can later have things of greater value. And, and so what I did, Donna, after I got my coaching certification, after I got serious, after I walked away from the GS job, really, I got out in the community and just began asking questions. I think mm -hmm. this is different, Donna. I, I asked questions. I didn't go out there pushing myself on mm -hmm. anyone. I didn't go out there just placing my card in anyone's hand. I really just started tapping into different industries and asking what they loved about what they did. But here it comes right here, everybody. I started asking where they feel challenged. You know, what kinds of things cause your disruption in your day? What kinds of things really create frustration and friction in your day? Because in learning all that, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in banking, whether it's in, you know, some kind of nonprofit out there, these pain points are cries for help. And once I realized where some of these things were, I knew that I could begin to start positioning myself to help them with that pain. Yeah. Now, last thing I'll say before we, we turn back and, and you share your side, I will, I will tell you, honestly, to all the listeners saying it to Don, I don't know if you've heard me say this before. I could have done this a lot more aggressively and the gains I'm having right now that you alluded to, those were there, 
they were probably there three, four years ago. But I like being my own boss. I like being able to decide who I work with and when I do things. And and I was doing a little mix of work and play, if you want the truth. Yeah. I wasn't playing small. I don't play small. But but lately, I think what's happening are seeds that I have sown years ago. over the last four, five mm-hmm. years. I've been doing this seven and a half. And some of those are coming to fruition now. And I think people get impatient, Donna. They go out there, they meet, they do something. They're like, here it comes. Well, maybe, right? Maybe I was not. victim of that. I might have. But yeah. I want to go back, oh, though. Sure. You said something about I could have been aggressive. Yeah. And it brought me back. I just not long ago, I had a conversation with a veteran buddy of mine. And he was helping another person that just got out of the military, another veteran just got out of the Air Force. And he said, the guy's starting to really annoy me. And I said, <laughs> why? <laughs> like that wasn't me. Okay. He'd moved back home and, right. and he goes, well, he goes, every time I'm there trying to help him, he's, he is like pushing himself onto me. Like he's trying to sell me something and trying to, you know, push the, the business on me. And and I went, ah, uh, I said, so he just got out and he's probably panicking a little bit. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, how Stress. am I going to yeah, fund everything? And if I have a family and this and that, and he goes, yeah, you're probably right. He goes, he probably is. And it, it just, when you said that, I'm like, yeah, because I actually wrote an article on that. That exact topic is that when we get stressed over starting up, we start to become inauthentic, right? Because yeah. you're like, okay, I'm selling my new soda I just created and it's really good. And then nobody's buying it. Like really take a sip. You really <laughs> want the soda. And you're like, but dude, I'm diabetic. I don't want your soda. I will go find the sugar-free one. I mean, like it really yeah. gets, okay, sorry, you know? But here's what, I think that's fantastic on your part, recognizing mm-hmm. what may have been in play. But you know what it reeks of? I just put an article out, a little thing I shot out to my audience the other day. I read it. It reeks of desperation. Yes. And I'm not likely to do business with someone who's desperate. That's exactly right. Remember the person that was like, I started to connect with, we had a meeting and I thought it really went well. And then afterwards I was trying to help this person. Like they, they were yeah. coming to the local area and I said, oh, let me try to get some resources. And it, and it turned into this weird competition. And, it, and I was like it was things like, oh, first one there wins. And, and then when they were coming to town, there was no reach out. Not that I expect all this accolades because I didn't really do a lot, but it was just really weird. It is weird. And I was like, God, we, we had this pretty good, I thought, initial meeting. And you, you told me, you warned me, you said, wow. Donna, as you progress, hmm. what's going to happen is people are going to see something out of you or your business that they want. And the inauthentic ones are just going to try to dig into that. And you yeah. and I both kind of figured out, we think that there's a piece in there that that person was looking for. I think that's true. And I just, and you know what the cool thing was? There was no anger. There was no malice. There was no disappointment. There was no nothing. I just was like, okay, well then I just won't engage with that. It's person. awareness, right? Well, what You can't be aware of something until you're first aware. So just, once you became aware, yeah. you got to decide what you wanted to do. Which was unlike the military, because sometimes you got stuck in those settings uh, and you had to re-engage. Sure. And then for you had sure. to learn like how to navigate That's through true. emotional intelligence and all that stuff, which this is also that, but yeah. I can just say, it's okay. I just don't really want to engage. You know what interests me though, Don, a little bit off topic, but it ties into what you just shared. So you talked about there was almost this spirit of competition and I don't understand that. I mean, if someone's going to be lazy and all they're going to try to do is glom onto someone else to get in their circles, to try to mind business. I don't like that. I had somebody do that to me early in my career. I I gave them a seat in a room for a big conference I do every year and uh, and they have coaching skills and Mm -hmm. training. And and once they got in the room, I, the room that I filled, right. The room that I went out in leveraged relationships with and businesses I'm serving, I watched this person work the room, handing out their card. And, and asking them to contact them. So, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a horrible thing. You and I, I think the thing that I love, Donna, one of the things you and I, I think, do really well out is we have an abundance mindset. Mm-hmm. I think we recognize, we recognize that there are people out there just for us even. Really, I mean that. They, they hear our story, mm-hmm. they, the tonality of our voice, the energy, the way we carry ourselves, and they're like, ooh, 
I really want to do business with Donna. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I also go out of my way to protect the businesses of people. Like I have a, a friend who's a fellow coach up in Canada and he contacted me maybe five weeks ago. Jay, I've got this gig in Arizona. I may not be able to go. Would you be willing to go and do that for me? I said, if you feel I'm the right one and you need me, of course I will do yeah. that. And I will do it under your brand. I will never mention that I have my own business. Like they will hear me say I'm a certified coach and I do, yeah. but it will all be under your umbrella. I think that's how you protect. It just happened and value. to me. It just happened to me yesterday. Actually, I don't think I even told you that I went to the chamber lunch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ran into somebody that hopefully we'll have on the podcast. <laughs> and he actually, you know, we connected really quick. And then he goes, oh, Jay, Jay told me about you and, oh, and, and said yes. And, you know, we had this quick conversation while well, we walked out together. And this is no joke. Somebody pulled up and all these people wanted to, to talk to Wes. Yeah. I mean, he's very engaging, yeah. you know. And so they're like, can we have your card? And he's a nonprofit for the audience yeah. there. So he has a really cool nonprofit. And so they were trying to get his info. This car pulls up again, asking him for his info. We were talking. That's crazy. And I'm all like, I feel like I'm with a celebrity here. <laughs> and and you know what he did though? The the two people were in the car talking about family members that had significant PTSD and were mm -hmm. having some issues. And I had just got done telling him kind of my background, and he says you know he goes i'm just talking to this lady right here that i actually think will also be of benefit in another way and so they were like yeah we'll we'll take anything and I so he gave his card i gave my card and you know away we went and He's honestly i'm really looking forward to meeting with him you know and, and talking with him and, and collaborating yeah he's a good guy he's going to be amazing on this podcast i'm glad you two connected. can't give it him. away though no no we're not going to give it away good. we're not going to give it away but uh, all right we're digressing we're yeah digressing but this is but this is they need to hear this i yeah. mean this is what happens when you're out there starting up in particular but i'm out there all the time still too we you have to genuinely be interested in others, hear their story, hear where they have need. And even if yes. it's not you or I, we may know someone that we can hand them off to who can help them. Oh, absolutely. And that's what kicks in the law of reciprocity. They naturally want to reciprocate and help us. And, and I can't help it. There's a quote. And I'll, I'll turn back to you. Go for it. Zig Ziglar, right? I probably said this, I bet, on three other podcasts at some point. Well, two things he said. One, you can have anything you want in life as long as you help enough other people get what they want. Yep. That means get out of your own way. It's not about you. Serve yep. others. And then number two, Zig said, quit chasing money. You'll never catch it. Instead, chase helping people and money will chase you. Yeah. And I'm paraphrasing, but I think it's true. Well, two, two thoughts came into my head. One, Richard Branson's mm -hmm. take care of my, I don't take care of the customer. I take care of my people. Don't That's take care of the customers. Virgin right? Atlantic. Yeah. Yep. He, he focused in on that when he owned Virgin Atlantic. Yeah. And so the other one was actually, ironically, we, we had Michelle Lang on the podcast, oh, yeah. right? She yeah, just, she's amazing. We just had her podcast come out yeah. a short while ago. And her and I connected before the podcast. I actually, that's the reason why she ended up on the podcast because her and I, I, I cannot remember if I saw something with her and I was interested, but we ended up talking. That's awesome. And then what that led to, one podcast, and then two, we just had a meeting a little while ago and I said, hey, you are like the resource guru. And for the <laughs> audience, you should go back and listen to our podcast, Michelle Amazing. Lang, Better in Health Point. And it's a nonprofit. And basically, they're all focused on getting resources all over the U.S. in your local areas. No matter what state you're in, you should be able to go to the website and find the resources for the I local area. That. Right. Yeah. A massive, massive amount of effort needs to be put into that. So, you know, on my website, I have a resource page and I hate the resource page that I developed because it's just a bunch of links and I'm not techy it's enough. It's evolving. <laughs> well, it's going to evolve now <laughs> because I'm under the work smarter, not harder. And I said, Michelle, you're doing all this hard work. Let's connect. And so my resource page is going to go to her. Basically, we'll take whatever she wants off it. And then she have a big old block on there that's going to say that they can push the button and we're going to link to her site, that's amazing. right? Yeah. Because it's critical. And, it, and for me as a veteran coach, it's important to be able to have those resources but that's not my, like the amount of time and effort. Yeah, uh, Donna, this still ties into what we're talking about. Every yeah. bit of this is the journey. I heard a speaker 
at my conference last year. I'm trying to think who specifically said it, but maybe it was two years ago. No, it was last year. Ed Milet, maybe, who has a podcast. He's amazing. But he said, it doesn't matter if you represent Coca-Cola. It doesn't matter if you represent Chick-fil-A, whatever the product or service industry you're in, we're all in the same thing, honestly. Yeah. And that's to to meet needs. Yeah. You know, it's to meet needs. I think he actually says to deliver happiness. But when you're helping someone with a need, aren't you making them happy? Aren't you aren't you assisting them in some way? But the authenticity and this again, see, we're, we're bringing each other around. So yesterday at the luncheon, you, you couldn't make it. But Cody was there yep. and Cody is a friend of ours. And Cody got up to speak and he has it's a family owned insurance. Yep. And he said something that was very interesting and it stuck with me. He said that what's happening in the insurance business is that these investors come in, they buy up three or four insurance agencies, Mm -hmm. and then it's all about profit, right? Yeah. So they get in there, they do what they need to, to make, it's all about numbers, stats, profits, and then they go and sell the business. And so these customers, nothing about the customer. And he said, we are on our second generation in this insurance company. We will never sell out to investors. Yeah. And in that, I, and you heard him say that. And I was like, well, it resonated with you, didn't very, it? Very, so. very much so because the authenticity. Uh, and that's what I always look for. As a matter of fact, I just had a little interaction with who I published through. Oh, yeah. My books are printed. Yeah. And I emailed, oh, the, the company emailed me and said, dear customer, your basically my account like they try to send me money and it wouldn't go through and I was like oh hey wait wait you're usually ever <laughs> yeah, trying to yeah, take we don't it want there me. to be anything ups in that <laughs> so I, I went in it looked like I might have got the numbers off so I fixed it okay no problem but so I asked her I said thanks for the information you can go resend it and she goes it'll be on the next cycle but it was very impersonal mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't resist. I don't and like I, that either. And I sent her an email back and I said, oh, I don't want to say her name. But anyway, I said to this lady, I said, I want to give you some feedback as a customer. I said, this is a very personal journey for people. And, and saying dear customer is just a very impersonal thing. True. And so I said, and, it, and it's for many, the first time indie authors very overwhelming yeah. on top of personal, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. I said, so it would really be nice if you made this a little more personal. And I said, and if you look on a lot of forums, you guys are not noted for your awesome customer service. And that is a true statement. That was not trying to dig at them. And you know what? She answered me. Oh, this happened today. Nice. She answered me. And she explained what was going on. She goes, typically we do names. I had to send out 400 of these And it comes in a batch and basically that's what you got. And she goes, I can't do 400 names on a thing, which I understood. And I said, I actually appreciate you quickly responded to me and I appreciate the explanation. And she emailed me back and said, Donna, if you ever need anything, you email me directly. Isn't that interesting? Boom. You provided... It was constructive just feedback. feedback that wasn't, wasn't that wasn't yeah it wasn't judgmental I was annoyed it, yeah but but you did it in a professional mm-hmm. way and look I mean truly if and you were to call on her I bet she would be responsible I'd be like hey who do I talk to for this? now I have a, a network of some sorts yeah. right no Which, and that's and this is what it takes to be successful and people need to understand it doesn't happen overnight when I was in the military I am not kidding you I used to work at hard at connecting with different yeah, entities right, sure. that I knew affected us and we affected them indirectly and directly. And I had somebody in my office say to me for a while, I was going TDY, you know, every couple of months to these different things. And he's like, why do you keep doing that? Why do you, why do you keep going? I'm like, it's called networking. I said, well, they need to understand our mission and we understand theirs and how we can help each other. He's like, you don't need to do that. That's not our job. All we need to do is basically process papers. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what they're doing now. Yeah. And I can assure you it's not very good. But the whole, when he said that, it just jaw dropped me. And I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I, it, you got an outlook. Well, I think, you know what, though, Donna? So I've got something going out on Monday on this same topic. The title of it is You're Doing It Wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and it's because I think people m- misunderstand the 
value and the purpose behind networking. They just go out there and kind of what I was talking about earlier. They're just throwing their cards around the room. It'd be like taking a job resume, 10 of them, and sitting them in a phone booth, which I now know I dated myself pretty heavily. We don't have phone booths anymore. But, (laughs) you know, just taking your resumes and randomly leaving them somewhere public, hoping the right person would pick one up. against the wall. Instead of truly going out with curiosity and a, you talked about authenticity, a genuine interest in wanting to connect with others, yeah. to hear about them. And, and they're again, law of reciprocity, even in the moment, they're probably going to say, well, how about you, Donna? What do you do? Now there's the segue, but you didn't make it about you first. No. I, I've had a bad encounter over the last several weeks with the same person, I'll say, <laughs> being really pushy with me within seconds of being in the room, pulling me aside, two, three different occasions. Did you get my email? Did you get my voicemail? Do you, are we going to, goodness gracious, I mean, look, back to reeking of desperation. But this takes time. And, well, and start it early. Uh, you may still be in uniform listening to this. You may be in, in out of uniform in a career path, and you just know it's not where you're going to stay Begin the process now of getting out there, networking. I'm going to call it building relationships, authentic relationships. Which is more accurate. And you'll be surprised. Yes. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, you know, I went to the power lunch the other day and I was for some reason feeling a little shy and I wasn't overly engaging. And I've seen you have moments where you can be a little more, not, I wouldn't call it shy, just a little more willingness just to kind of hang back and see what's going on. And I was just kind of like, there was really nobody I was really interacting with and I was like mm, I should be I'm here at a business lunch but <laughs> and I guess what you know I ran into Wes and then boom him and I connected yeah, and then he's that's like good. let's talk and that's right? the power of one it yeah. only takes one yeah. person that you really so let me ask you Donna because I know people are probably thinking you two are squirrels today but, well, but it all relates we'll, it does we'll wrap it to this first we're at we, we talked about funding a little bit of sacrifice right first of all you have to understand you're going to spend more than you make end of story yeah the yeah. goal is hidden not cost. Hidden cost. to do a lot, a lot, a lot, but there's a lot of hidden costs. Yeah. I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat right now. Yeah. I mean, we self-funded, we took it out of our savings, dumped <clears> it into <throat> the account. I was like, Lord help me. Yeah. I won't get into numbers. I, no, I know no, you no. know this with you. I've shared this in private, but my business account is, uh, it's really nice today because I never yeah. have to worry about how everything I utilize in my career in my profession that I need, there's a lot of recurring things. I don't ever have to look. I have such a wide cushion margin (laughs) built up in there that it it really feels nice, but it didn't happen overnight. And it stays consistently in this range. And I draw from it just in case anyone's wondering. I I pay myself out of it. So it's I'm paying myself and I've got this well to go to that makes sure everything's taken care of. But again, it was a it took time to get there. It did. And I'm, the reason why I'm laughing is because I just remember I had a book event and I had to go buy some marketing material and, and it was going to cost. And you're like, oh, pins. Everybody loves pins. Go buy them. And I'm like, okay. So I looked them up. I was like, do you know how expensive pins are just for the audience? Marketing pieces, everybody, right? Pieces Writing pins. Just to, yeah. No, no, not a pen, a pin. I bought the pens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pins, the little... Oh, lapel pins. Lapel for, pins. Sorry. Yeah, I, I do the other in my business. So that's why my brain went there. Oh, I thought you said pins too to me. Because pens, I yes, I bought the pens. Okay. But I thought you had said pins, right? No. Also, and I looked them up and I was like... You're like, yeah, I buy a whole bunch of them. And I'm like, I can't afford that. And and I was, we had the same marketing person and we're all talking and I'm talking to him and I, he goes, all right, Donna, what do you want to do? I'm like, cheap, like really cheap. <laughs> and he just laughed. And so, you know, he got me up with something that worked for me. And, yeah. But I was laughing because I said to my husband, I'm like, is obviously who's established and who is not. No. And it is not me right now. <laughs> yeah. Said, so I've done a lot of different things, right? Testing the waters. Here's where I want to bring everybody back. To yes. This. Because they around. heard me say I did a lot of soul searching, tapped into something that I really enjoyed went and found a way to get a, you know, credentialized, yeah. which just to let you all hear me say this, I don't believe anyone has to credentialize you. If you just want a moment of levity, I know you've heard me say this before. People go, what? You don't? You sh- yeah, I need to have some kind of certification, Jay Wright. And I'm like, here's the comparison. What if Wilbur and Orville Wright 
stood on that hill and said, I don't know if we should do this. We don't have a pilot's license. I mean, go do what you have to do. I mean, you obviously can't go be an attorney without passing a bar right. and having a state license. But I went out and found something that I wanted yes. to be credentialized in and then went out and did it. That's fine. Everybody heard me say I went through one of these companies online that can help you start up a business. And I said, look, I got it done today. Knowing what I know, maybe I'd do something different. You went at this a little differently, I mm-hmm. think. So share, mm-hmm. Donna, what you did. So well, let me wrap backwards because we, we squirreled this one. We are. Bit. It's okay. But, They'll follow us. But we did financial and authenticity, right? Yep, That's yep. the things that we yep. talked about and how things started up. So, so can, can, can I, yep. one, one thing, authenticity, yes, but just then wait on my spirit. I thought, what are you passionate about? Because whatever your passion, you, what you're doing right now, your passion is showing through. Oh yeah. I love what I'm doing. My, because you can't go wrong with that. People feel that. They see it when you're out there. Okay. Well, and if you're passionate, you're going to be authentic. I think right? that's true. And yeah. vice versa. I, yeah. Absolutely. It's going to show either way. So, so, all right. What'd you ask me? What do you want me to do? <laughs> well, what'd you do to, <laughs> what'd you do to, to formalize your business? How'd you go oh, through that? So I, How did you end up finding what you wanted to do? Oh, Lord, I think we talked about kind of some of the, I'm not going to go through my whole crash and burn story. But when I finally decided to start the business, I was about a year after I retired. Now, funding, you know, somebody asked me the other day, like, how are you funding yourself? And I was like, well, I'm self-funded. I do have the luxury of retirement. However, comma, I just want to add that I am retired from the military. My husband's retired from the military and we have two kids. So it's not like we just have free flow of money everywhere and let's go. But we did do stuff while we were in the military and we lived off of basically one and a quarter incomes while I was in the military. So we lived a lot, well, 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 well below our means and we put that money aside. So when it was time for me to leave, I didn't know I was starting a business, but when it was time for me (laughs) to leave, I didn't have to go run and get a job. But we were very intentional about that. I shop sales. I like consignment shops. Costco's my best friend. I mean, all that stuff. It all adds up. So anyway, a year into it, I decide it kind of all hits me. This is where I want to go. I do want to do veteran coaching. That was where I started to focus on. And then somewhere in there, because I'm also an author, I had this idea for self-publishing but I had it on a back burner and it came right up on the front burner because I had five people jump in and go, my God, your idea, we want to do it. And it was the right five people, like seriously lined up. So yeah. editors, cover artists, all this stuff. And I went, oh, so I opted to put the coaching on hold, started working startup in self-publishing and it's been awesome and exciting but stressful because my money's going one way and yeah. it's not in, it's going out. And I have to be very careful every time I make a purchase. So I have to work a lot with contracts in what I'm working on. I need people to sign contracts and I need to keep them. So I had to go invest in one of the companies that does online signature stuff sure. because there'll be lots of contracts in this business. And I was like, okay, when are they having a 20% off sale? I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, that's pragmatic. It's just being, I don't like to use the word cheap. I like to call it thrifty. I think I you're being very thrifty. So much I can use, right? <laughs> so I was like, okay. Or when I have a book event, you know, I look, there's a really cool book about in Louisville, Kentucky. And I thought, well, that'd be great. So, you know, I could apply and I could go. And then I'm like, I got to possibly drive or fly and spend money. And maybe this is not such a great idea right now because it's really only going one way. So my startup right now, I'm only a year and a half into it. That took precedence. It stopped everything else. And now the veteran coaching is starting to pick up now. And I'm doing this in my way. Like you said, like there, I, Maybe I'll go eventually go get an official certification, but what I am doing is I am working with somebody else and for the coaching to help people basically take off layers. Yeah. So want them to kind of take off, take off the armor, like my blog, right? Taking yep. off the armor and when I take these layers off and then when these layers come off, then we're going to start working on the coaching because what I feel personally is that 
when people get into, for instance, I'll use me as an example. I started, I had the contract and everything. I was going to work with you and I couldn't do it. Yeah, I wasn't there. Yep. And so I want to do the pre-work with them. And then when they're ready and we just had the meeting. And so I said, all right, you guys are going to tell me this my guinea pig test when you're ready. And then I'm going to take it on from there. Well, here's what's interesting. When you said, you know, you may at some point go, you, you all heard me say, I don't think it's necessary. Can you, and would you learn something about you through the yes. process of course, but you know, here's the other part of it. Seven and a half years of doing this. I've never had one person and I've coached many and have served many more than that not once have they ever said jay can you show me your certification and i have it i could show it okay what's important though donna what's important i think this is true for anyone listening i think you need to understand what it really is though like coaching this isn't for you i'm just saying to anybody else yeah, yeah, yeah. just trying to make a point on why you don't need to be credentialed but you need to understand coaching is a billion dollar industry and i will tell you there's a lot of charlatans out there And many of those charlatans think coaching is telling. I'm just going to tell you what to do and you go do it. I'm just telling you all now. You can call me out. You can make a post on this. We'd love to hear from you, by the way. I'd prefer it be positive. But but if you have something (laughs) constructive, bring it. But I'm telling you right now, coaching is not telling someone else what to do. When you tell someone else what to do, you own it, not them. And coaching is really about helping someone else tap into their potential. If you understand that and you follow what is a process similar to and you lead people through it in the right way i'm not aware of anything out there in in the world that says if you're caught coaching without a license or without being credentialed you're a foul it's not a license I'm by like the way. it's a certification <laughs> yeah it's different yeah you don't want to go practice medicine <laughs> please, uh, please at don't. all but but that's my point to you right. don i i know you well enough and have listened to the way you talk to people and if you choose to go do that later it'll be for you but you're serving people right now yeah. i know that yeah. to be true well and you know it's not like i just go run willy-nilly no 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 huh he, he helps me a lot too, well, it's but, a, it's a mutual. but it's it is learning how to engage in more of a listening role than the, you know, and active in a passive way, sort of, it sounds silly, but anyway, so the whole point of this is that the startup for me has been exciting. And, but I go through, we move a whole bunch. Like when I was doing contracts, remember you didn't see me. I was like, he's like, how's it going? <laughs> the only word out of my mouth was stupid contract. Yeah, your head contracts. was down and you were in it. Uh, and then we got them done. And boy, I'll tell you, one of the editors I work with, she's like my cheerleader. She's like, don't you feel awesome now? Look, look back over the last, I think it was like six months we were doing this. Look back at that and look how far, like from where we started to where we are on these contracts. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I was very, you know, you're kind of proud of yourself. You're like, wow, I did that. So, you know, financially I'm watching everything very carefully and I'm putting a lot of effort into, you know, making sure I'm stewards of my own money and making sure that I'm putting a good product together. That's going to add value to people, It is going to, but it goes highs and lows, right? Like, you know, I logos just, we have seven logos, right? Seven prototypes. They're amazing. Yeah. So I'm all excited. I sent you feedback, by the way. Yes. You got it. And I put it out on my group. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, guys, if you want to give us info on our logos, because I don't want to just put them out to the public. No. I want to give them individually. Then say yes, and I'll send them to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know how much feedback I got from that? Mm, probably goose egg. But two. No. And one of them is my mother. <laughs> and the other one's a friend from high school. Oh, you gotta I'm going to tell you, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? No, and so I can't. I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm kind of not in a low point, but I'm a little, damn it. Why is it on social media? I get engagements on something that I wouldn't expect. And then other stuff, I really want engagement and I get nothing. I don't understand those algorithms to save my life. And so there I am beating my head against the wall and I'm like, okay, I just got to figure out another route. So I'm, I'm rehashing and I'm rethinking and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to maybe email people directly. Or well, something. here's the other thing though, Don, I think in talking through that is so what if early on you move out one way and then need to shift? Yeah. That's what I pivot. Isn't that the word today yeah. that people use pivot? It's not like we're writing and it's stone and it can't ever be changed. Right. I mean, I've, I've changed my logo at least once. I've changed my business cards probably three times. My website has gone through, you know, I don't know what I want to say. Recreate, re, re- Redesigns, renovation, redesigns, 
several different times. At the end of the day, that old cliche that says you have to make money to have money to make money, I don't necessarily buy into that, but I do want all of you to hear Don and I just sharing that you may think it's a fairly clean and simplistic thing, but it is going to require an investment. Sometimes that's going to look like money before it's rolling in. Sometimes it's just going to be a heavy time investment. But I love to say it's sweat equity. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. your business. No one else can represent that for you. If you decide to go out and be an entrepreneur, and Donna and I are solopreneurs, if you want the truth. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've got 1099 employees that I can contract. And I do that on occasion to meet Surge, or Mm -hmm. these are all people that I know personally who are certified coaches or, you know, you've done work with me Mm -hmm. in the past. I mean, I have the flexibility to do that, but I I do want everybody to hear you and I both say this. I've heard it said, and I understand it to be 100% true today. Entrepreneurs are the only ones who will trade a 40-hour work week for an 80-hour. Like, I'm constantly in and on my business, but it's good. It's gratifying. It doesn't, you've heard me all talk at the onset about travel and enjoying life. I still do all of that. But at the end of the day, it's me who is the face of the business, who is the representative of, and I'm responsible for. And if you're going to soul search and find something you're passionate about, and you want to create your niche in the world by standing up a business, starting up a business, Just know that it won't happen overnight. If it did for you, we would celebrate you. But I think you should be prepared. It will take time. I used the term earlier, aggressive. I hate using that as a coach when I say words that can have a little bit of a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. I catch it when you said it back to me. I was like, ouch. I could have been more intentional and more proactive in building it faster. That's what I would tell you. But I chose to go at a speed that was comfortable for me. But it can look different for someone else. Well, and if it goes too quick... And it can create to, other problems. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, people just think, oh yeah, job security. I'm like, mm, you think so. And it, it can really go sideways. You see yeah. companies that explode and then they can't keep That's up. Exactly right. And then they lose their customer service. They'll lose their, they can't keep track of things. That's right. And, and you know, it's unfortunate. So I am all about slow and grow and I'm good with that. I don't have a problem with it, but I want to, I want to kind of wrap it up Yeah. because these are the things that I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm here. We, we talked about a lot, a lot of stuff. We definitely talked about the financial part. You, you, you're going to have to pay before you make it. Nobody, nobody ever starts in the black. Yeah. You're just going to play in the red for a while. And, and that right there, I will tell you, that is probably one of the biggest things yeah. why a lot of them fail because they, they either can't, they run out of the, you know, financing or they just can't stomach that. Sure. And, and I get both right to you can lump them together, authenticity and passionate. If you've got one, you're going to portray the other. I mean, you really are. And if, if you're passionate you're about what you're doing, you're going to be authentic about it. If you're just trying to do it and just try to push the widget, it's going to come across that way. Just, just don't. Well, can I just say right there too? I'm sorry. I know right. you're tracking these out. They need to hear these multi-level marketing. I'm not against multi-level marketing. I've got friends doing it. You and I know people in common. I know some that are crazy successful. I know some that aren't. And the reason they're not is because they think just by jumping in, it'll automatically happen. And it doesn't automatically happen. It takes so much. The person that we know is very, very successful in her. hers. I mean, very, I mean, she's got another car or something. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. It's amazing. But she's also very passionate about it. She loves it. So And then the the third one that I'm hearing and that we've talked about, flexibility on a lot of different levels, right? That's a plus. It's It's a a huge plus, but it's a plus, but you have to be willing to be it also. Like you have to be willing to like, you know, when I'm busy and the kids take up my time, I'm working eight o'clock tonight. Self-discipline. That's what I would say. You better have some self-discipline. That kind of goes with the flexibility. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, it's funny you say that because it's like online learning, right? Yeah. I did my master's through online. Okay. I loved it. I yeah. love the independence. I love doing it on my own. I set my own schedule. I was doing it while I was in the military. I finished it when I was out of the military. Yeah. I, I was totally thrilled. I've heard other people go, oh my God, I hate it. Yeah. I need to be in the classroom. I Structure. Need that. They need the structure. And I say this to the audience. If you are that person, it's just awareness. I'm not saying you can't do anything you don't want to, but 
if you are that person that's kind of like that saying, I've got to be in the classroom and I need somebody to make me accountable, or you're the person that's, I have to have the personal trainer because they have to make me accountable going to the gym versus I go to the gym because I love to, or because I really want to, or I am doing my online class because I really want this master's degree. I'm setting up my schedule and making it a priority. Know which way you are because you get into entrepreneurship you better be that person that can be flexible and disciplined. Yeah. You really have to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's I mean, a lot of distractions. I mean, you could end up, God, you know, yes. I clean early on. I cleaned my house a gazillion times a day because it was better than trying to sit down and think about what I really needed to think into yeah. to, to market that next piece, What time you know? did you get that article I sent you last night? Oh, at 1130 oh, last yeah, night. Yeah, I was sending yeah, you were up hitting the keys. Why? Because I had time. And I looked at it at 6 a.m. this morning. So I mean, go. up and at it and, and won't. I didn't get know. up at 6 a.m. <laughs> nope. Because well, my kids decided to keep getting up last night. And yeah. so I get up a little later than that. But and it's so formation. We went two different routes for formation. Yep. Formation. You, you know, you got to. You have to figure out what works for you. And honestly, I will say that there is a lot of intuition with entrepreneurship. Mm. If it's not feeling right and it's feeling forced, it may not be the right route to go. And the way that does feel right and is not forced, it may not be a route that you ever thought of. Mm. I mean, things that are happening in, in one of my startups, I'm like, oh, do we really want to do that? I guess we're going to do that. Okay, we're doing it. <laughs> Yikes. And, and then I'm like, oh, that worked you, better. Did you hear she's a serial entrepreneur, right? It's, I'm have, trying to get her to embrace that. She, she, has, I, um, she has multi irons in the fire. I do. I, and <laughs> when I tell people that I see their eyes just glaze over, like, you're crazy. And to me, it feels normal. Yeah. And I don't feel stressed over it. Yeah. And it works. Yeah, right? you're making it happen. So, you know, it's been fun for me to watch you, I'll say, as a close, oh, as a I'm close sure, friend. Many to, levels. <laughs> no, I mean, it, you know, you where you were in the beginning, just uh, un, this uncertainty yeah. and taking that time for you. And then now the clarity you have, the people you're putting around you, how much you have already accomplished. It's coming. I tell you that all the time. I remind yeah. you of that. It's coming. Yeah. And in uh, one day you're going to just Donna, you're going to find yourself reflecting and going where did this come from? Yeah. And it came from everything you did prior to that. Every day. Is the church. Yeah, every day. Every day. I mean, you in the things that you're not going to, I just had somebody, I, I needed feedback on a, basically a information that we're going to give out to the public. Yeah. And I sent it to our cover artist, graphic designer. I, and he goes, well, I mean, overall, it's pretty good. I said, but I need your professional feedback. I knew it was holding back. <laughs> and so he writes this laundry list of micro details. He goes, Better overall, this skin. looks good and this and this. But if I was going to be nitpicky and I go, here it comes. And there was like 10 things. And he goes, <laughs> I probably should stop there. And I'm like, and he goes, I hope I didn't offend you. And I said, I wouldn't have asked unless I wanted it. Right. Right? And me as the person owning that business, I'm like, now I'm going to go figure out what all of that meant. And I'm going to go figure that out. I, look, I, that's what you do for me in my life. I come to you because I know I'll get, un, you know, <laughs> honest. So truth, but, but I think we do that for each other. When yes. you were going to do your most recent book and talking about some of the things you were setting up, I think I said to you something like Donna, you're not going to be Stephen King right out of the book. She's not writing horror fiction. Just <laughs> I'm using a well-known author, but you're not going to be that right out. But you know what? Even he started somewhere. So the point is, you just have to continue to carry your message. And that's been fun for me to watch you do that and how it's starting to take on a little bit of a life of its own. It's well, fun. And there's your, there's your fourth point in all of this. And, and we will wrap it up on this is consistency <laughs> and being consistent in everything you're doing. Even yeah. when you feel like it's not happening, do it again, do it again, do it again, because it, it's going to take, but if you just do it once and then pull, and I've done it a thousand times, but well, that didn't work. And you just did it once, you know, I mean, you told me you're like, stop digging up the seeds that you planted. Yeah. 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 I'm like, okay, sorry. You can't, you can't keep digging them up to see if they're sprouting. So on that note, Jay, yeah. we're going to wrap it up because my Lord, did, we could have gone for I, two hours well, on this topic. You can tell we haven't been in the room together in a while, but yeah, I think I mean, people are going to find value in this. I hope and so. <laughs> speaking, speaking of authentic, Donna and I, I know she sees it this way too. We both hope that you hear our hearts, mm -hmm. uh, yes. that we, we really do this because we want to share information. We want to equip you. We genuinely love each other's company. 
We're not just yes. trying to go out there and talk about what color is the sky today. We're bringing things that as two veterans, we've learned along the way. And we're hoping that it unlocks a door for some of you or it creates inspiration, motivation, causes you to dream again if you had turn that off. But listen, we are all in on this and, and we're really honored to get to spend the time with you all. So. Absolutely. Everything Jay said. And, and honestly, we do have these conversations. This is not like yeah. turn on the podcast and make up a conversation. These conversations go on all the time between us, which makes this very yeah, easy for us is. to do. So it's just cleaner when we get in this environment. Sort of. <laughs> we got to hold this one all over the place. That's okay. Hopefully our executive director gives us is grace gonna, with yeah, this. And yeah. Be nice to us. <laughs> all right. So do you have anything else? I'm going to let you land this because I am good yeah. with where I'm at. I, well, look, I think this is what I usually have a quote. I, I didn't come in with one prepared. I often don't. Something just comes to me. But I think it was Maya Angelou who said, no plan works unless you do. I mean, at the end of the day, you do need a plan. You need to take some time putting some pre-thought into it. You don't have to have all the answers, but you do need to reach out to those that can help you get clarity and find the answers. But uh, I, I find being an entrepreneur, owning my own company, getting out and serving in the ways that I get to serve to be extremely gratifying. And I know that's true for you, Donna. Absolutely. So I just hope you found some value in this, everybody. On behalf of Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson, Thank you for listening to Beyond the Front Lines, and we would love to hear from you. Go Have ahead. a great day, everybody. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Front Line, a podcast of coming home well. Join us every other Wednesday. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Follow us on Instagram at comminghomewell underscore BTS or on Twitter at comminghomewell. Thanks again, and until all are home and all are well.